This is a hat stand. Now why in the world would you want to make one? Well, because look at it, it's cool. I was asked to build this as a prop for a play and I just decided to make a real hat stand instead of just a prop. This project was really all about problem solving and doing stuff I've never tried before. <laughs> but don't worry, there's enough good tips and stuff in this video to keep you thoroughly entertained for the next few minutes. <laughs> I wanted to show you this beautiful wood I got for this project. Poplar. Poplar is a real inexpensive wood that usually is used for secondary surfaces, the insides of drawers and things that won't show. But if you take the time to prowl through the lumber bins, you'll be surprised at the variations in color and grain powder, and it can be quite beautiful. I'm gonna glue these together into two turning blades. I could square these up on my table saw. I'm sick of waiting for you. Sick of just passing through. This is about two and a half feet long. It's I've never turned anything this long on my lathe, so this may take some time. This top part, I've made a little peg that's one inch in diameter. My idea is that that will fit into the other section. And I've also created this bead here in hopes that that will kind of disguise where that joint goes. On my next spindle, I'm trying to make a bead that matches the top bead on the lower spindle. Well, as always, Turning is a lot of work. <laughs> so this took quite a while to turn both of these pieces, but I think they're gonna work out. I'm sick of wedding. So I think that'll go together pretty nicely and it'll kind of conceal that joint there. So I'm not gonna glue this up yet. I gotta keep it apart while I work on the stand. Well, just when I thought I was done turning, I decided to turn the pegs. And so I think this will go a little bit quicker though because I'm just using the three quarter inch lumber and I just cut them into square pieces and I'll just try to bang them out. I'm making a little half inch tenon on this and to test it, I've just made a board with some holes in it and that's the half inch hole. I'll just keep testing it. And I can just cut this top part off of each one. Well, there's all six of my pegs and they're all a little bit different from each other. <laughs> and it gives it that handcrafted look. I'm sticking together these four boards with carpet tape and I'm gonna cut all the legs out of them. And even though I only need three legs, I'm cutting an extra one just in case I screw up. <laughs> And I've glued up a larger blank that I'm going to turn as a base for the legs. I spent a long time today trying to figure out how I'm going to cut the slots for the dovetails in this round piece. And I thought of a lot of different types of jigs that I could make, but I only need three short little slots. And so what I'm gonna do is just hot glue on this board. Like that. I've got a dovetail bit in my router and I've set up a stop block on my fence. Well, that actually worked out pretty well. Now I'm just going to break these apart. <laughs> I'm gonna chuck this back into my lathe now.
Now to cut out the dovetails in the legs, I'm just going to push it in with this backer board. I wanted to cut out that little notch right there so that when this slides up in here, it'll cover up that area. I'm gonna to start to glue this base up now. Well, since this piece is rounded, it doesn't make a perfect fit. There's a little bit of a gap there, but I'm not gonna worry about it. I want these pegs to go in at a slight angle, so I've made up a little jig to help me drill the holes. So what I'm gonna do is just clamp this to my workbench. And I've made a dot everywhere I wanna drill a hole, so I'm just going to line those up with this hole, which I've pre-drilled at an angle. Now I'll clamp this side down a little bit just to hold it in place. Yeah, that worked out okay. So now these will just fit right down in there. I completely forgot I wanted to round over these edges of the legs with the router before I assembled it. So I guess I'm just gonna sand them over now. <laughs> I'm shaping the tips of these so when I put them into these holes, it has a little bit better of a fit. And I'm just gonna finish this with a coat of tongue oil. I wanted to use a tongue oil finish on this project because it has kind of an earthy feel about it. It's not as plasticky looking as lacquer or polyurethane. And since this is supposed to be something of a period piece, a Victorian hat stand, I didn't think lacquer would do it justice. And thanks for watching. I hope you picked up maybe some ideas for projects of your own. <laughs> Be sure and check me out over on my website at woodworkingformeremortals.com and on my Facebook page. And now on Keek, check out Keek. I've been posting video updates throughout the week of how I've been building this project and it's just, I think it's a lot of fun over there. So check it out and I will talk to you guys next week.